In the final hours of his life, Adolf Hitler found himself at the epicenter of chaos and desperation. Surrounded by his closest associates and witnesses to the fall of the Third Reich, he faced inevitable defeat. In the underground bunker in Berlin, under a barrage of Allied bombs and advancing Soviet troops, he made decisions that sealed the fate of both himself and his inner circle. It was a time of intense emotions, betrayals, loyalty, and final choices that would forever be recorded in the annals of history. The day before, it was one of the most emotional moments in Hitler's career. On April 29, 1945, around 3.30 p.m., Adolf Hitler was deeply isolated in his bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery, as the war he had unleashed was drawing to a tragic close. Cut off from the reality outside, where street fighting in Berlin was intensifying by the hour, the Fuhrer still formally tried to maintain control over the collapsing empire. In truth, however, he had lost all hope. From the morning, he had been receiving reports of Berlin being almost entirely surrounded by the Red Army, which was only a few blocks away from the Reich Chancellery. In the afternoon, Hitler learned one of the most important pieces of news of the day, the execution of Benito Mussolini, his longtime ally. Mussolini and his lover, Clara Patacci, had been captured by Italian partisans, shot and their bodies desecrated and hung in public view. This news shook Hitler. He realized that a similar fate might await him if he were captured alive. This was a signal for him that he must follow through with the suicide plan he had been contemplating for several days. The fear of humiliation after death led him to decide that his body must be burned. Meanwhile, the situation on the front worsened with every passing hour. Soviet artillery continuously bombarded the city, and the street fighting in Berlin grew fiercer. Soviet troops, after defeating several German units, were closing in on the bunker, engaging in brutal combat for every street. Despite this, Hitler continued to hold formal meetings with commanders and his closest associates in the bunker. He discussed the military situation with them, though it was clear there were no real chances of defending Berlin. In the evening, around 6 p.m., Hitler began preparations for an event that would take place just a few hours later, his marriage to Eva Braun. This ceremony, in the face of impending defeat and destruction, had an almost grotesque character. The couple prepared for the event, even though above their heads, Berlin was being destroyed by artillery fire and bombings. The wedding took place late in the evening, but Preparations had started in the early evening. During this time, Hitler also dictated his final orders, including his will. Between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m., Hitler focused on finalizing the will. This document was of great importance, not only in the political context, but also on a personal level. Hitler expressed his final wishes regarding the future of the Reich, his estate, and the people he trusted. One of the most important points was his demand that his body, as well as Ava Brown's, be immediately burned after their deaths. Hitler feared that his body might be desecrated, just as had happened to Mussolini. The atmosphere in the bunker became increasingly claustrophobic and depressing. As more news from the front reached Hitler, his mental state continued to deteriorate. He suffered from advanced symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and his movements became more and more uncoordinated. Though he tried to maintain discipline and an appearance of normalcy, his inner circle sensed that the Fuhrer was on the verge of a breakdown. The last night, these were dramatic and tension-filled hours in the bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery on April 30, 1945. The night from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., witnessed desperate actions and preparations by Hitler and his closest associates as the inevitable end of the Third Reich drew near. After midnight, the atmosphere in the bunker grew increasingly tense. Around 1 a.m., Hitler emerged from his private quarters to bid farewell to the staff who had stayed with him until the end, including Martin Bormann and Josef Goebbels. According to reports, this farewell took place in complete silence, 
Hitler silently shook the hands of his loyal colleagues and servants, looking them in the eyes with visible exhaustion and resignation. He then returned to his private chambers, where the mood was heavy and grim. Meanwhile, outside the bunker, the fighting raged on. The Soviet offensive was causing ever greater destruction in Berlin, and Red Army forces were now only a few hundred meters from the Reich Chancellery. That night, between 1 o'clock and 3 a.m., particularly fierce fighting took place around the Reichstag. With each passing hour, the Soviets captured more parts of the city, but resistance from SS units and the Hitler Youth was fierce. Hitler knew that the morning would bring complete defeat and that Berlin would fall into enemy hands. Around 2 a.m., the tension in the bunker began to take on a different form. As the end became more apparent, some of those present began to release stress. Witnesses later recalled that in different parts of the bunker, there were spontaneous bursts of laughter and singing, a desperate attempt to relieve the pervasive fear and tension. However, this momentary relaxation was tinged with the awareness that dawn would bring the final end. At the same time, Hitler in his private quarters was preparing for his impending suicide. His physical health was already in a dire state. His hands trembled, and his movements were increasingly uncoordinated due to the advanced Parkinson's disease that had worsened significantly in the final months of the war. His mental state was also in shambles. Hitler had long been convinced of the inevitability of defeat, and his decision to commit suicide was final and unquestionable. In those hours, as Hitler's staff and close associates pondered what the next day would bring, no one had any doubts that this was the Fuhrer's last night. The mood in the bunker oscillated between desperation and resignation, and the fear of the upcoming Soviet assault was omnipresent. Hitler remained in his private quarters with Eva Braun, preparing for the ultimate solution, death, which was now imminent. Morning. It was 10.30 a.m. on April 30, 1945, when Adolf Hitler met with General Wilhelm Keitel and other members of the command in the bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery. That morning, Berlin was almost entirely surrounded by the Red Army, and Soviet troops were just a few hundred meters from the Chancellery, effectively blocking any attempts at escape or reinforcements. At this moment, Hitler received the final reports from the front, which definitively confirmed his worst fears. No Wehrmacht unit was capable of conducting effective defensive actions, and any hope of breaking the siege of Berlin had been crushed. During this meeting, Keitel informed Hitler that General Walter Wenck's 12th Army, on which the Fuhrer had pinned his hopes for a rescue, had been surrounded by Soviet forces and would not be able to break through to Berlin. The same fate had befallen General Theodor Busse's 9th Army, which had also been defeated. The commanders had to openly tell Hitler that Berlin no longer had any chances of survival, and that any hopes of a counteroffensive were futile. This news was the final confirmation for Hitler that his reign was coming to an end. Listening carefully to the reports, Hitler was clearly resigned, and his decision to commit suicide, which he had already made, was irrevocable. After this meeting, Hitler retreated to his private quarters to make final preparations for death. At that time, the atmosphere in the bunker was a mixture of gloom and uncertainty. Some officers and Hitler's associates, such as Josef Goebbels, Martin Bormann, and the Fuhrer's secretaries, continued their routine work, though many of them already knew that the end was near. Some began considering escape options, although Berlin was nearly completely cut off by Soviet forces. Outside the bunker, the fighting continued relentlessly, and Soviet artillery bombarded the Chancellery intensely. Hitler, fearful of what would happen to his body after death, had already ordered that after his suicide, both his body and Eva Braun's body should be burned to avoid the fate that had befallen Benito Mussolini. The last meal, it was 2 p.m. on April 30, 1945, when Adolf Hitler ate his last meal in the bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery. That day, everything followed an unusual yet calm routine. 
Hitler, who had been a vegetarian for years, had a simple meal in the company of his two loyal secretaries, Traudel Junga and Gerda Christian. As usual, the dish consisted of spaghetti with a light sauce, a typical choice for the Führer, who avoided more complicated meals. The atmosphere at the table was quiet and tense, though outwardly, Hitler remained calm. During the meal, conversations were minimal, and their tone clearly reflected the growing tension. At one point, Hitler began talking about various ways to commit suicide. He noted that the best and quickest method for immediate death would be a shot to the mouth, which would instantly shatter the skull, leaving no time for suffering. These words further heightened the tension in the conversation, though Hitler remained exceptionally calm at that moment. Meanwhile, in the bunker, the atmosphere was filled with resignation, and the sounds of battle above grew more intense. Soviet troops were already very close, and artillery shelling was becoming more frequent. Despite this growing horror, Hitler kept his composure. Everyone around him knew that the end was inevitable, and no one even attempted to suggest alternative solutions. At one point, Josef Goebbels, in a last desperate attempt, tried to persuade Hitler to flee, but the Führer firmly rejected the idea, clearly stating that his decision to remain in Berlin and end his life was final. You know my decision, I will not change it, were the words that sealed his fate. Around 2.45 p.m., after finishing conversations and farewells, Hitler withdrew to his private quarters. All preparations had been completed, and the tension in the bunker only escalated as his associates waited for the inevitable events to unfold. Death. At around 3.30 p.m. on April 30, 1945, Adolf Hitler took his own life in his private room in the bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery. Eva Braun, who had also decided to commit suicide, was with him. As the sounds of Soviet forces drew closer, Hitler executed his plan, combining two methods, a gunshot and cyanide ingestion. Eva Braun chose to ingest only cyanide, as they had previously agreed. At approximately 3.30 p.m., after locking themselves in the room, a single gunshot rang out, alarming those outside. The first to enter the room was Hitler's personal adjutant, Heinz Linga. Along with Martin Bormann and Otto Günscher, they found Hitler sitting on the sofa with a gunshot wound to the head, while Eva Braun lay next to him, looking as though she were peacefully asleep with no visible signs of injury. According to witnesses, Hitler sat on the right end of the sofa, slightly leaning forward with one hand on his knee. A pistol lay next to his leg. Blood from the head wound had pooled on the carpet. His eyes were open. Two pistols were found on the floor, and the walls of the room bore bloodstains. As per Hitler's earlier orders, his body and Eva Brown's were quickly taken to the garden of the Reich Chancellery. 200 liters of gasoline had been prepared, and the bodies were doused and then set on fire. Soviet artillery fire and bombardment nearby made the operation dangerous, but in line with Hitler's command, his body was to be entirely burned to prevent desecration by the enemy, as had happened to Benito Mussolini. Inside the bunker after Hitler's death, a heavy atmosphere descended. Those gathered inside, like Joseph Goebbels and Martin Bormann, were aware that their time was also coming to an end. Goebbels, loyal to Hitler until the very end, decided to follow his example and commit suicide within the next few hours. After Hitler's death, this moment had enormous consequences, both inside the bunker and around the world. In the bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery, the atmosphere was filled with gloom but also a sense of resignation. Josef Goebbels, Hitler's closest collaborator, and other high-ranking officers realized that the end of the Reich was inevitable. Nevertheless, Goebbels chose to remain in the bunker with his family, intending to take his own life. Others, like Martin Bormann, attempted to organize further evacuations, though most knew that hopes of escaping Berlin were slim. In Germany, Hitler's death was not immediately announced. 
The news was kept secret for a few days before being broadcast on May 1st when the radio announced his death. The official statement claimed that Hitler had died fighting for Berlin in an attempt to emphasize his heroism in the eyes of German propaganda. In reality, however, for many Germans, his death signified the final end of the Third Reich and hastened the country's surrender. The nation was in a state of chaos, desperation, and fear of the advancing Allied forces and the Soviet Red Army. Many, seeing no way out, chose to commit suicide, especially in Berlin, where the situation was particularly dire. Around the world, Hitler's death was met with immense relief and euphoria. Upon learning of his death, spontaneous celebrations erupted. In London, New York, Paris, and many other cities, people took to the streets, cheering and celebrating the imminent end of the war. For many, it was a symbolic moment marking the conclusion of the six-year conflict that had brought about millions of deaths and destruction on an unprecedented scale. In particular, in London and New York, people gathered en masse in the streets, dancing and singing, rejoicing at the fall of one of history's most brutal dictators. From a military standpoint, Hitler's death accelerated Germany's capitulation process. Karl Dönitz, whom Hitler had named his successor in his will, still attempted to negotiate the terms of surrender, but the Allies, including the Soviet Union, demanded full, unconditional surrender. On May 7, 1945, Germany officially surrendered to the Allied forces, bringing the war in Europe to an end. For the world, it marked the conclusion of the greatest conflict, which had brought unimaginable suffering. 